Grant Arthurlow, John Le Measurer, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Episode 15, Sorry, Wrong Number, featuring John Lorre and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Graham Stark, Bill Pertwee, Pearl Hackney, and Avril Angus. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. As the summer of 1940 drifts slowly by, Britain is still very much at war. The Home Guard goes from strength to strength, and no avenue is left unexplored in their ceaseless drive for efficiency. It is Saturday morning, and at the headquarters of the Warmington-on-Sea platoon, Captain Mannering is about to begin one of his lectures. The subject of my lecture today is communications. Now, in the event of an invasion, it is obvious that enemy paratroopers will try and seize certain key points in the tower. Someone hand me the blackboard pointer, please. I haven't got it, sir. <laughs> what do you mean you haven't got it? Of course I have. The billiard cue uses a pointer. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean, sir, but I still haven't got it. I distinctly remember telling you to bring the billiard cue. No, sir, you've never said anything about bringing a billiard cue. But I did... Oh, really? I'm... Would a table tennis bat do, sir? <laughs> Of course it wouldn't, you stupid boy. <laughs> now, in the absence of a suitable pointer, I shall use my finger to point out the most likely places to be seized by the enemy. This should be interesting. <laughs> Quiet, Walker, please. Now, the key places are the gas works, here, the railway bridge, here, telephone exchange, here, and the water reservoir, here. <laughs> now, with all these points out of action, the town would obviously be crippled. No gas, no trains, no telephones, and no water. After all, not many of us can last very long without water drink. I've managed it for a year. Yeah, be quiet. <laughs> In short, all these parts of the town are absolutely vital. So, the object of the exercise is... To stop the enemy getting his dirty hands on our vital parts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One way of putting it, I suppose. <laughs> now, we shall post two men at each one of these points. In the event of an attack, one of the men will run to the nearest telephone box and phone me at the church hall here. Excuse me, sir. Mm. If one of the men's running to phone you, what happens to the poor fella who's left behind? He'll be running the other way. Get Walker. <laughs> this is not a matter for levity. No, the man who's left behind will pin the enemy down with constant withering fire. Uh, sir, it's going to be a bit difficult to keep up a constant withering fire. We've only got five rounds each. Yeah. <laughs> I realise that, Jones. You'll just have to make every shot tell. <laughs> now, you know the plan that I've drawn, that I have pinpointed the nearest telephone box to all these strategic points. In the case of the railway bridge, the nearest phone box is 100 yards away. Here. Gas works. One here. 50 yards away. And the water reservoir, one here, <laughs> just outside the gate. Uh, here, come on, right here. There's a phone box just outside the hare and hounds. Well, that's nowhere near a vital supply source. That, sir, is a matter of opinion. <laughs> now, the problem is the telephone exchange. Now, unfortunately, the nearest phone box is over half a mile away, over here. So, there could be a considerable delay in summoning help. Well, perhaps it would save time, sir, if we used one of the phones inside the exchange. What? I oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. As a matter of fact, I was just about to say that. <laughs> testing you, see if you're on your toes. <laughs> of course, sir, I quite agree. An awfully clever little wheeze. Yes. <laughs> now, as soon as I receive your call, I shall relieve you at the head of a swift, mobile attacking force. Make sure that all your bicycles are in good working order. Uh, there's only one thing, sir. What's that, Fraser? What happens if the phone box is out of order? Well, in that case, as usual, we shall have to improvise. Anybody, any suggestions? Yes. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. oh, good, good. Who's got the first suggestion? Permission to speak, sir. Yes, Jones. Well, sir, one of us could climb to the top of the gasometer and heliograph down onto the church hall. <laughs> That's a long wait for someone to heliograph. <laughs> I don't think I quite follow you, Jones. Heliograph, sir. You reflect the rays of the sun in the mirror, 
We used to signal like that when we were in the northwest frontier of India, you know, sir. That was when we was fighting the phantoms. Yes, yes, her. all right. Well, yeah. never mind that now. They were we? boys, you know, used to come at you with a long knife and... Yeah. 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 Well, you could, say you could, heliograph. Yes, there's only one snag, Jones. We can't see the gasworks from the church hall. Yeah, but couldn't one of us be on top of the church tower, Mr. Mannering? Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, but make a note of that, Wilson. Wait a minute. There is a slight snag. We can't rely on the sun. After all, it might be raining. Anyway, sir, I've just thought. We wouldn't be able to signal Sunday lunchtime. Why not? Well, with everyone cooking their Sunday dinners, the gasometer would be down. <laughs> Does everybody have their meal at the same time? Well, we always have our Sunday dinner on a Sunday. <laughs> Why couldn't we shoot an hole in the top of the gasometer and then set light to it? You'd see that for miles. <laughs> uh, I think you're going into the realms of fantasy now, Jones. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about, do you? Phrase, he asked for suggestions, didn't he? And what did you want to ask him for if he didn't want them? It's always the same with him. Yes, all right, all right, Jones, all right. Just sit down. Now... Still assuming that all the phones are out of action, how would we signal? For Mr. Speaker. <coughs> yes, Jones. I know how we can signal the railway bridge, sir. Just tap on the rails. You can hear that for miles if you put your ear on the line. Yeah. <laughs> yes, a train might come along and run over your ear. <laughs> Don't be so silly. If you had your ear on the line, you'd hear the train coming, wouldn't no, you? No, you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. You'd be oh, listening to something would. else. You wouldn't make it coming along. All right, all right. Oh, that's, 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 that's enough. enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> now, all this has stimulated a very interesting discussion. But in the meantime, we shall have to assume that the phone isn't out of action. Ah, oh, I'm not allowed to use a public telephone box, Mr Manring. My mum says it's unhygienic. <laughs> she says you can catch things from the receiver. You always hold it away from your face? Ah, I tried that once, sir, but I couldn't hear. <laughs> so you've never really used a phone box? No, sir. Well, what do you do when you want to make a phone call? Uncle Arthur lets me use the one in the bank. Does he really? <laughs> I don't use it very often, though. Very glad to hear it. Only when I phone auntie in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> well, sir... I'll talk to you later. Uh, Mr. Manrin. Yes, Corporal Joe. I just wanted to say that I am not very experienced in using a phone box. You see, sir, I have spent a lot of my time in far-fung places. Some of them quite a long, long way away. <laughs> in whirling dervishes, they don't do a lot of telephoning either, you see, sir. You're all right. Now, there's only one thing for it. I shall have to make sure that you all know how to use a phone box. Yes, but even if you show us, sir, my mum still won't let me use it. <laughs> Surely, Pike, with the enemy pounding at our gates, you could run the slight risk of an infection? Well, I suppose so. I don't like it, though. My mum says you get mastiffs in your ears. No, oh, <laughs> Now, we'd better go through this by numbers. On one, you pick up the phone. On two, you insert tups. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. Excuse me, sir. What is this, uh, this uh, ching, ching thing? Oh, really, was it? This is the sound of the coppers dropping into the box. Ah. Ching, ching. Oh, I see. Ching, ching. Now, I don't want you to be put off by the sound. Quite normal. The operator will then say, Number please. And you ask for this number, which is Warmington on C. Uh, 333. Three, three. Yes, I know what the number is. <laughs> Warmington on C. 333. Three, three. The operator will then say, I am connecting you. Now, when you hear me answer, press button A. You all got that? Yes, oh, yes, yes. yes. Right, uh, let's just try that, shall we? Sir? Wilson. Yes, sir? You can be the operator. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> now then. On one, you all pretend to pick up the telephone in your right hand. One. 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 Good. Now, on two, we all put our pennies in the slot. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. Yeah, what is it? Can you change sixpence, please? <laughs> what on earth for? I haven't got two pennies. <laughs> stupid boy. We're just pretending. Now, here we go, then. Two. Ching, 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 ching. 
on, Wilson. Number, please. Number, please. Warmington on three. Three, three, three. three. <laughs> Get on with it, Wilson. Oh, what, sir? I'm connecting you. What for? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. I'm just sorry. I'm connecting you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Yes, Jones. Well, I thought you didn't put coppers in until the operator tells you. Oh, you're wrong. You put them in first. No, no, Jones is right. You no. put them in when the operator no. tells you. No. All, all right, all right, all right. Only one way to settle this. It was tried out under actual combat conditions. Some was full the men in outside. We marched down to the phone box at the corner. Right, then. Now, I'm going to take you into this telephone box one at a time and make sure that you know how to use it. Right, Pike, you better come in first. Uh, here you are. Is that... Well, give me room, boy. <laughs> right, now, here are two pennies. I'll lift the receiver. Put it to your ear. It won't bite you. That's better now. I want you to make the call to the church hall. There won't be a reply because there's no one there to answer. So you press button B and get the money back. Yes, sir, yes. Good. Now put the pennies in. One. Two. Oh, you were right, sir. They went ching-ching, just like you said. <laughs> Number, please. Um, w Warmington on sea. Um, I've forgotten the number. <laughs> Stupid boy. It's warming to... Just a minute. <laughs> Wilson! Yes? Just checking on the number. Uh-huh. Warming to not see. Three, 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 sir. Correct. Well done. <laughs> warming to not see. Three, three, three. Warming to not see. Three, three, three. I'm connecting you. Now... Let the phone ring for a bit. Then press button B and get the money back. Yes, sir. What have you pressed button A for? <laughs> Someone answered. What? Hello, Mum. Is that you, Frank? Where are you phoning from? I'm in a call box down the road. I thought I told you never to use a public phone box. Yeah, but it's not my fault, Mum. Mr. Mannering made me do it. <laughs> Did he indeed? Well, I'll have a few words to say to him next time I see him. Oh, he's here with me now. Oh. Well, let me speak to him. Right. Mum wants to speak to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello, <coughs> Mrs. Pike. Hmm? May I ask what you're doing in my office? I brought Frank's scarf down for him to wear. He'll catch his death without it. And I heard the phone ring. All the same, Mrs. Pike. You've no right to be in my office. Now, look uh, here, Mr. Mannerin. What's the idea of letting my Frank use a public phone box? I've never let him use one before in his life. Why, he can catch all sorts of things from a oh, phone, would you know yeah, yourself? Yeah, you... <laughs> well, yes, sir? Come in and sort this out, will you? It's Mrs. Pike. Uh, I'm coming, sir. Now, Pike, you... Get out and let Sergeant Wilson... Come. Right, oh, sir. Will, will you say goodbye to Mum for me? Don't forget. Get <laughs> Don't forget. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mavis. Oh, it's you, Arthur. Oh, I'd have thought it was no better than to let Frank use a public phone box. Well, it's not my fault, Mavis. Of course it's your fault. Well, you mollycoddle that boy far too much, Mavis. I, I think you're being very silly. Oh! Oh, silly, am I? Well, you're silly if you think that I'm only here to administer to all your little comforts every evening. Oh, really, Mavis? Mm, you think that you've only got to knock at my door, I'll come running. I've never asked you to run, Mavis. <laughs> you take me for granted, Arthur, and you always have taken me for granted, and I'm not going to stand for it any longer. She's hung up, sir. Thank goodness for that. Well, what am I going to do? I don't know what you're going to do. I've got a platoon to run. I can't be involved in your domestic squabble. Right, Fraser, you're next. Come in, sir. God, of all the damn silly ideas showing us how to use a phone box. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Joe? Well, we're on guard duty tonight. Outside the reservoir. Well, so what? Well, the point is, 
The gates of the reservoir are right on a corner, and there's a hell of a draught. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, every so often, one of us shelters in the telephone box until his circulation gets going again. Oh, that's a good idea. Not half. <laughs> you can ring up the odd girlfriend at the same time. <laughs> oh, I don't have any odd girlfriend. <laughs> well, neither had I, until I'd stood about on that corner all along. <laughs> you want to try it? Woohoo! Well, hey. Jock, get out of that phone box. It's your turn outside. All right, all right. Hey, under that lot. Shh, there's going to be a heavy raid on London tonight. Yeah, sounds like it. Right, well, you keep your eyes skinned, and I'm going to... Here, here, just a minute. That one sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's coming down. All right, uh, I've got it. Here, there she is. She's just going down behind those trees. I think it's landed in the reservoir. Look at that! Smack in the middle of the reservoir! Here, is it one of ours, or is it one of theirs? Theirs! It's a doornail, of course. Well, what are we going to do? Remember what Captain Manling said? One of us had to run and phone him, while the other one keeps up a constant weathering fire. Well, if you're going to do that, you're going to need plenty of ammo, right? Here, you better take mine. Uh, have you got tuckers on you? No, I haven't. Well, don't bother. I'll reverse the charges. <laughs> Yes, sir. Tell the men to keep their heads down. There weren't anybody getting shot at. Very good, sir. By the way, where's Walker? He went off to phone you. That was half an hour ago. Ah, he'll have run away. I always knew he was no good. Perhaps he's gone to the pictures. Oh, don't be absurd. <laughs> there was a good film on at the embassy. That's all about aircraft. It's funny, that, isn't it, Uncle Arthur? Well, I wouldn't really know. I haven't seen it. No, I mean, it's funny that the film's all about aircraft. It didn't mean there's stop funny talking. films. Oh, stop, talk, talk, not, stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Just stop talking, the pair of you. The fact is that Walker's not here. Yeah, no, it's cowardice in the face of the enemy. That's number one field punishment, tied to the wheel of a gun carriage. Well, we haven't got a gun carriage. <laughs> well, we'll just have to improvise. Be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> I can't understand why that plane hasn't sunk. Well, that's because the reservoir's only a quarter full, you see. The aircraft's sitting on the bottom at about four feet of water. When it's full up, the water's at least 16 foot deep. I want to know how we're going to tackle the plane, Wilson. I'm not interested in the waterworks statistics. Uh, sorry, sir. No sign of anybody in it. Must have all jumped out by parachute. Permission to speak, sir? Yes, do. Why don't we call them on them to surrender in official terms? And then if they do not answer, we will be cognizant of the fact that they are not there and have sprung off previous. <laughs> Thank you, Jones. Anybody know the German for surrender? No, sir, but Andy Ock is German for hands up. <laughs> yes, I think you've told us that before. Might as well try it, I suppose. Andy Hock! Andy Hock! <laughs> <laughs> Too dark. Probably can't see us. We need something white to wave. Pike. A white scarf you're wearing. That'll do. Take it off. I can't take this off. Don't argue. I'll take it off at once. My mum was furious about this. She hasn't forgiven Uncle Arthur yet for what he said to her over the phone this afternoon. You don't prevaricate, boy. Now then. In a second, I'm going to get Corporal Jones to wave the scarf. At the same time, I want you all to shout at once. Are you all ready? I will. Yes, sir. Right, Jones. Wave the scarf. Here I go, sir. Stand by, men. Andy Hop! <laughs> Permission to speak, sir. There is somebody in the plane. <laughs> My scarf. Look, Uncle Arthur, it's shot full of holes. All through. Bloody cheek. <laughs> I've never heard you swear before, sir. I never felt like this before, Wilson. Damn foreigners. Coming over here and then having the cheek to fire on us. <laughs> About time they were taught a lesson. We'll show them. And up against us now, people with guts. Jones. Sure. Go and phone GHQ for help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going now, sir. Yeah, wait a minute. So, what, what is it, sir? You don't know the number. I do, sir, I do. It's woman to noddy, three, three, three. Don't be ridiculous. That's the church hall. <laughs> no good phoning there. We're all here. Oh, yes. Sir, sorry, sir. Now, look. Yes, I've written the number down on this piece of paper. One, six, six. You got that? One, six, six. 
Now that's a secret number, so immediately after you've used the phone, destroy it. The post office aren't going to like that, sir. <laughs> Not the phone, you idiot, the piece of paper. Yes, yes, I understand, sir. Right. God's sake, go, Jones, and good luck. The rest of you spread out and keep your heads down. Now, let's see. Uh, now, what was the number? What was the number? Where's that bit of paper? Yes. Right. Yes. Ah, that's right. 991. <laughs> that's it. 991. Number, please. 991, please. One moment. Press button A. This is the embassy here. Oh, good. Can you help me? Certainly, sir. Tonight, one of our aircraft is missing. That's funny. I thought it was one of theirs. <laughs> no, it's one of our aircraft is missing. It went up five minutes ago. Well, it's come down now. <laughs> no, sir, it doesn't come down to 10.30. If you hurry, you'll just catch it. Eric Portman and Googie Withers is in it. Really? <laughs> well, why are they shooting at us? <laughs> No, sir, they're not still shooting. They finished some time ago. They're not finished? Well, they're shooting right now. Can't you hear them? Listen, if my mates don't get off too sweet, they'll be in dead trouble. They've got to have help. Now, look here, you. If you don't get off that phone, I'll send a policeman round. I need help. I need help. Stop telling me. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't hang up. Oh, dear, what am I going to do? I haven't got any more pennies now. Where's the torch? Oh, oh, that's better. In the event of emergency, lift the phone and press button. Oh, well, here goes. Emergency? Which service do you require? Fire, police, or ambulance? There's an, there's an enemy plane in the reservoir. I, I want GH Area Command Quarters. Oh, I'm sorry, I can only get you fire, please, or ambulance. <laughs> Is the plane on fire? No, no, it's not. Well, you don't want fire service, do you, then? <laughs> what about ambulance? Anybody hurt? Well, not yet. Oh, I don't think they'll send ambulance just on the off chance. <laughs> what about the police? Is a plane causing obstruction? No, 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 not really, no. Well, what's it doing? It's shooting at us. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I wish I could help you. But I only deal with emergencies. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. What do you mean, ta-ta? No. Hello, hello, hello. Wait. Hello. 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 Oh, God. Come on, put that light out. Oh, it's you. What do you think you're doing flashing your torch like that? Do you realise there are enemy planes overhead? Yes, and there's one down in the reserve, boy. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, there's an enemy plane crashed in the reserve, boy. Oh, well, you're our own guard. Why aren't you dealing with it? What are you doing hiding in this phone box? I'm not hiding. I'm not hiding. I'm trying to get on to GH Court for help. And I've got no more coppers left. Oh, blimey, shift over. I'll do it. Ah, Jones. Where have you been? I'm sorry, sir. I had a bit of a job getting through the GH quarters. But they're on their way now. Who's that you've got with you? The warden says, Miss Rogers. Your corporal said the jerrys are firing at you. Yes, that's right. Well, they look peaceful enough to me. I think I'd better take charge. This is an ARP matter. How dare you? Look, mate, don't try to teach me my job. A lot of fuss about nothing. They wouldn't dare shoot at me. I'm a civilian. All right, you lot. Out you come. <laughs> Yes, well, well, I'll leave you to it, then, Madrid. <laughs> Come back here. We need every man we can get. Look, Section 6, Paragraph 3 of the regulation states, no ARP personnel will take part in any combat duties. I'm off. Damn card. Yes, you're right, sir, yes. Well, let's hope the army gets here quickly. I don't know how we're going to get those Germans to surrender. They could hold out for days. I think I know how we could do it, sir. If one of us... Hey, excuse uh, me, sir. Here comes somebody now. Ah, good. Good evening. I am from GHQ, Lieutenant Hope Bruce, Coldstream Guards. Captain Manring, Home Guard. <laughs> this is Sergeant Wilson. How do you do? No, how do you do? Are they still shooting out there? Yes, sir. They've been keeping it up fast hours. Oh, yes. Not very nice. Right, Captain Manring, you'd better get your men back out of the way. We can't expect Home Guards to tackle a situation like this. It's a job for the regular army. Well, we've managed all right up to now, sir. Managed what? They haven't surrendered, have they? 
Get your men out of here while I give orders to my men. Yeah, pips quick. Hello, what's that? Where, sir? Over there, running this way through the bushes. Losh, oh, I think it's Walker, sir. I expect the film's finished. Be quiet, thank <laughs> Walker, where have you been? You've been away three hours. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I've... I've been at a word with the bloke in charge of the reservoir. I had to slip me five bob, but he done it. Done it? Yeah. He done what? He opened the sluices. For the past couple of hours, the water's been flooding in and should reach the top in less than half an hour. Then Jerry's left to swim for it, unless they want to sit on the aerial. Well done, Walker. Good thinking. Ah, the manner in you, you're still here. Look, I've decided what to do. We're going to sit here till we starve them out. <laughs> I don't think that'll be necessary, sir. I think you'll find they'll surrender very soon now. Oh, really? Why? Well, you see, it's quite simple, really. They're not going to like what's going to happen to them. I don't think I quite understand. Don't worry. Even you will before very long. In the meantime, we'll leave you to do the mopping up, as it were. Good night, Lieutenant. Come on, men. I must say, Jones, that water level's coming up very quickly, isn't it? Yeah, I keep telling you, Sarge. Those Jerry's don't like it up, em, sir. <laughs> they don't like it up, em, you see? They don't like it up, em, sir! <laughs> That episode of Dad's Army from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wooden, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Graham Stark, Private Walker, Bill Pertwee, ARP Warden, Pearl Hackney, Mrs. Pike, Avril Angers, the telephone operator, and John Forrest as Lieutenant Hope Bruce. Sorry, Wrong Number was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced John Dyer.